Hi everybody and I welcome you again on my channel I Dr. Tutsi. I am Dr. Tukia Zbanuseinova and I am with you today and going to present the second part of the topic cornea as a refractive medium. Let me just briefly remind you what we discussed on the first part. It was uh, just general information about cornea as it is. Uh, with describing cornea uh, refractive and optical parameters. We talked also about corneal aberrations histology and corneal biomechanics. Also, let me remind you that this, this topic in general is a compact information about everything what we have to consider uh, for the corneal refractive surgeries. So this is the second part and let's get started. The second part is going to be about the examinations. So before starting corneal refractive examinations, the first thing we have to do is the slit lab examination. Slit lab examination will help us to understand the status of the corneal surface. If there is any scar, is there, if there is any dry eye syndrome for example, or if there is any T film instability, because all these factors may affect the clear image of the cornea when we analyze it or try to estimate it for the refractive surgery. The next uh, examinations are keratometry. So keratometry provides us the information about the curvature of the cornea, the keratometry uh, power of the cornea. Another information what we have to get uh, from is a topography uh, examination. Topography describes the anterior surface of the cornea. And the next is tomography, which provides a cross-sectional image of the cornea. So let's talk about keratometry. Every examination in general has advantages and not disadvantages, but limitations. That's why uh, it's not right to use only one uh, specific examination. It's always good to combine all information and make a right decision. So there are many doctors, for example, who can do surgeries only with topography or only with uh, another tool. But uh, for me, from my point of view, the best thing is when you have different tools and you do routine, routine examination and at the end you just estimate and make your decision for corneal refractive surgery. So let's talk about the advantages of keratometry. It identifies the abnormalities on the surface of the cornea and it's a very sensitive indicator for, uh, of irregular astigmatism pre- and post-operatively. So the limitations that it's not enough only uh, using keratometry, so it doesn't provide there enough information. So, and another thing that when we talk about keratometry, it gives us the information about the central part of the cornea, which means that it gives us, uh, it describes us the keratometry power of the cornea in the central three millimeters area of the cornea. And this area actually, in other words, it calls corneal cap or central cap. Next, uh, topography. So when we talk about topography, we mean uh, placid disc topography and elevation corneal topography. So again, what is the advantages of this method? It analyzes astigmatism for regularity, asymmetry and orientation. It diagnoses corneal ectatic disorder and also uh, it gives enough information for pre and post-surgical um, est corneal estimation. And limitation is uh, that evaluates only central and paracentral cornea. It measures only two dimensions. It gives us uh, basically information from the anterior surface of the cornea and errors are possible. In this slide, for example, we can see a color-coded image. This is basically the main thing what we have to pay attention on when you when we look at the topography image. So here the warmer colors they represent higher dioptric power um, which tells us as, about the steepening uh, of corneal curvature while the cooler colors are used to represent the lower dioptric power, flatter curvature. So similar color coded maps can be used to present changes in 
elevation. And there is always, when we look at the topography map, there is always a scale on the side and based on the color, we can estimate the power uh, of the cornea in diopters. So I will give you in this slide a few samples of normal cornea. This is how the normal cornea looks like. As we can see, there's a uh, cool colors, so it's a normal curvature of the cornea. In this slide, for example, in this picture, we can see some pattern which called bow tie pattern or kissing bird pattern. So this is astigmatism. This is a classic picture of a patient who has astigmatism. But what we have to pay attention on, we have to pay attention on the axis of this pattern. For example, if we um, have the imaging, just if we image the line on the center 90, central 90 degree line, then we will have the, with the rule astigmatism pattern. For example, in this case, uh, well, yeah, okay, in this case we don't have with the rule, this is the against the rule astigmatism because the axis of the pattern lays on the 180 degree. But in this patient, this is a with the rule astigmatism pattern because the pattern, a bow tie pattern, lays on the uh, 90 degree axis. So again, all these uh, pictures are pictures for normal non-operated cornea. Then, then what we have to know about topography that there are a few maps uh, which uh, we estimate. So there is a refractive power map which gives us the information about the refractive power of the cornea. Then it's local radius of curvature map or in other words tangential map. Then profile difference map uh, which gives us about the uh, um, different uh, curvature from an assumed normal aspheric cornea. So basically we use this map when we estimate the corneal curvature from pre and post-operative um, image. And another map is distortion map. Um, we don't use this map that often. I don't know about you colleagues, but you can just <laughs> tell me. So let's, um, here I want to, Pay your attention on this slide. Here, for example, uh, we can see an actual, this is an actual map. So just here, I'm going to give you a few samples of maps and we just going to talk about that. So on this actual map, we can see the picture of the cornea, of the central cornea. And, uh, but on this slide, for example, we can see the cornea of the same patient, but we can pay attention that there, it looks a bit different because there are some areas and we may think that maybe we have to pay attention or be more worried about that. But actually, no, this is just the tangential uh, map, which shows that the transitional area from the curved part of the cornea to the flat. So this is basically it. So when you estimate uh, the cornea with tangential map, you estimate it whole and you can see the correlation of the central part to the, with the peripheral part. There are many surgeons actually who use only tangential map and there are uh, surgeons who use only actual map, but there are also who, who is using both of that. And I think this is the great choice by uh, using both of them and uh, estimate better the cornea. So this is actual map and this is tangential map. So I want uh, you to pay attention on this slide, on the refractive map. And with the refractive power map, as noted here, there is an increased calculated power, if you can see in the periphery of the cornea, which is red. Keratoconus and pellucid marginal degeneration are frequently expressed as inferior peripheral stiffening, as we already know. But when we use the refractive power map, this image can be masked, uh, this pathology. An example of such a case that resulted in ectasia following LASIK surgery, and it's illustrated here, for example. 
So this is a first uh, picture, this A picture is a pre-operative uh, refractive power map of patient who developed ectasia to LASIK. So the map can be interpreted as against the rule cylinder as we can see this pat bow type pattern here but the inferior stiffening is muted by the method but in this map for example it's an actual map actual power map uh, of a similar topography which clearly showing the inferior steepening and C shape in topography uh, which actually give us the information that the patient has a pellucid marginal de degeneration. This is actually the sample of the thing that we have to use both map and combine information from these maps uh, separately. Yeah. This is a patient with ectasia after LASIK. The next thing is the difference. Let's talk about the difference map. So uh, in this slide, for example, this is a patient preoperatively. As we already know, this patient has astigmatism. Um, I can say that this is with the rule. It seems a bit oblique astigmatism. And uh, this is a preoperative map of a cornea. Uh, we can say oblique or with the rule corneal cinder, cylinder which we can see on the image and this is the same patient but after LASIK surgery so this is a post-operative LASIK map and the tool this device it calculates the difference clearly pre and post-operatively and it shows us the characteristic of the toric ablation which we can see here clearly so that's basically it about the difference map. So it shows us the difference of curvature uh, between measurements. Actual difference map. Yeah. So as we already understood that the main purpose of topography is the detecting keratoconus. And there are two criteria, uh, two factors, let's say, or criteria we have to know when we um, detect keratoconus. It's uh, Rabinovich criteria and regularity indices. So what is a Rabinovich criteria? Let's pay attention on this slide. And here we can see the different patterns which we can use clinically and based on these patterns for example here are uh, points with which we have to know it's for example that the central dioptric power uh, has to be more than 48 diopters in order to get suspicious or get worried and when the dioptric asymmetry between inferior and superior part is more than one so most surgeons and most clinicians consider more than 1.5 diopters. The difference is uh, like a warning sign. So we have to be worried about that. And the third uh, point is that the difference that between two eyes it should be greater than 1.5 diopters. Then we can suspect that maybe one eye has the suspicious keratoconus or there is a possibilities of uh, uh, ectatic disorder of the cornea. Another thing is regularity indices. For example, in this slide, we can see, the, uh, I wrote here, skewed radial axis index. So what is that? Uh, as we talked already about the possible oblique pattern of astigmatism, if we have this central line, for example, on the 90 degree axis, and if we have the, another line of the oblique axis based on the pattern of uh, the bow tie pattern, and if this angle between two lines, which is alpha angle, is more than 20 degree, then we can think about the possibility of uh, keratoconus uh, development. And another regularity indexes are keratoconus index and keratoconus severity index. So this is in this slide, for example, we can see a picture from a topography device and this tool actually gives us already the information about if there is a keratoconus or and how and also it gives us the information by percentage. So what's the percentage of a cured keratoconus? 
So it's very actually useful and it's very um, informative and easy to uh, diagnose. That was, that was basically it uh, uh, about the second part. I just want to tell you that the third part is going to be a continuing um, topic and discussion about corneal uh, examinations. I just didn't want to put too much information in the second part, as I told you. I don't want uh, the parts to be more than 15 minutes. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was really informative for you. Hope to see you again on my next videos. I will keep you updated. Have a good day. Bye.